oh, walk around. Okay, shouldn't yeah. be too far. Walk so around the entire building. I can actually say the Russians must feel at home right now because, like, okay, if, if you don't speak the locals, like, so do you speak Russian? Um, nope. We've got South Africans with us, English, Australian, and then there was a Chinese guy. Like, I only like speak Dota Russian, which means you can't speak that kind of <laughs> Russian to a security <laughs> guard because <laughs> you will not. Vocabula <laughs> vocabulary is limited. Yes, yes, yes. Life life will involve a prison um, if we do that kind of stuff. So we avoid we avoid prison and we can uh, not avoid the draft, draft stage, which is now underway. So MVP Phoenix will be diacide for this game and we'll have Clickstorm, who are the Russians. I, sorry, I can't. I really, I, I can't. It's well, it just happens. <laughs> um, no, it just rolls off the tongue, literally. Th yeah. <laughs> no, I'll be over on the radiant side for this game. And we actually start off with one of the bands which we saw before, which was the Tidehunter uh, early on, and the Brewmaster actually being banned out, and the Death Prophet for the Wisp. This does, however, mean MVP Phoenix. If they want to on the dire side, the Lycan pick is well, op well, well open. But at the same time, it's a double pick up here for the Russians. So Ogre Magi, Skywrath Mage, all the good stuff is still in the pool. I love the Wisp ban against MVP Phoenix, though, because they were one of the few teams along you know, with like Fnatic six months ago, a year ago, they were picking up Wisp without, you know, a hero that goes with Wisp, like Tiny, Chaos Knight, whatever. Mm -hmm. They would pick Wisp just because of the values of the hero. They'd pick up healers, they'd pick Wisp to be a decent mid-game hero, relocate into team fights. Yep. And I'm pretty sure it was Reason that used to play Wisp a lot for them. He was basically the no-tail of Korea. So that's, that's a nice little pedestal to put him on. Yeah. He better perform now. I remember though when he <laughs> when he first came to the scene, uh, when, when Korea Dota first started up, and he ended up, he actually actually was playing that Wisp in uh, oh I think it was the uh, was the next on sponsor league or was it Super League? There was there was some big competition where they were inviting like teams like Virtus Pro to come in, and he ended up playing one of the Wisps in that game, and it uh, he's come a long way. He's come a long long way in his Wisp play. I think you like to forget some of those first games. I'm sorry, man. I, I don't forget those games. He always plays the martyr role. You know, dazzle a wisp, throw away your own life for the savior of your teammates. Mm -hmm. look, look at Click, click Storm's uh, like first pickup. Again, we see the Viper appearing. It's safety first Viper, I yeah. always like to call it. The hardest hero to gank in the middle lane, or at least one of the hardest heroes to gank in the middle lane. And then you got the Ogre Magi. So again, we see a good lane presence coming out from him. The only downside for the Ogre now is the fact that obviously Skywrath Mage is actually really good against the Ogre. If you're able to silence him up, you can burst him down very, very quickly. He's kind of slow to move as it is anyway, but if you get a concussive shot, then the seal, then the orb all into him, and then just one other hero that might have a controlling stun or a little bit of extra burst damage magical to, c to combine up with the Skywrath Mage, the, the Ogre could be in trouble. And uh, instead of actually going for the Vengeful Spirit negative armor to help get through, the Ogre Magi, we actually get a Naga Siren pick up here from MVP. So bring on the team fight controller, which is the song of the siren, the no fun siren. Will we see it run as a support or as core? They're pretty open for it right now. Um, support is definitely possible because obviously it's an Ogre Magi on the field, so you won't get punished as heavily for having a melee support, especially when you get a Sky Wrath Mage also in there. Uh, but for now, I'll probably flag the Naga Siren as your number one role and just try and find the farm. But it's, it's really going to be about what cl like Clickstorm come through and run as their core hero. Because if they, if they have something which perfectly counters the Naga Siren, then they'll be like, let's just switch him into a support role. He's still going to give you what you're searching for, which is your Song of the Siren and your negative armor harassment up against the support heroes. Yeah, and then the ensnare to set up Mystic Flare is pretty good. Yep. Which is why I'm leaning against it being mid, because mid nuggers don't usually level up ensnare. They go for the illusions, the minus armor, try and control the lane, get farm, get into the jungle. The ensnare just doesn't fit into that. But mm -hmm. if you go for the one roll or the support, you do put a level or two, well, obviously the support starts maxing ensnare, but in, in the one roll, you don't usually max illusions. You get the ensnare. And then you've got the opportunity for Skyrath to make up the distance, get a concussive shot, spam Arcane Bolt, you know, two or three times. And mm -hmm. it really does open up team fights. And they just drop it banned out by MVP, though. They don't want that map dominance from Clickstorm. This, for me, actually would flag more of a, of a number one role for Nagas Iron. Mm -hmm. Like, you take out your Curie, take out Nature's Prophet. These are, uh, like, the Nature's Prophet who could deal with the offlane, um, be able to soak up a little bit of experience, but more importantly, with Jakiro and, and a Prophet, you'd be looking to force out the towers again. I know we're talking about it in, in our first game on the main stage, the Jakiro and his power to do that direct damage into the towers and force the issue. Nagasaran doesn't want to have that. 
Like, you need to hold on to your towers and make sure the knight can just sit back, have a lot of space, have a lot of farm, and then you walk into the fight around 18, 20 minutes in, and you go, hey, I have Radiance. You have to back up now. And I think that's the, the current plan from MVP. Secure the farm for the Naga Siren, which means the Skywrath Mage needs to have a roaming ganker. Uh, the VS is still available inside the pool if they want to go down that line. Uh, and then they just smoke rotate, try and find some pickoffs. The VS and the Skywrath Mage, a lot better combination than what we saw earlier on as the, as, the, as, the, as the roaming combo. They can get a kill on the Viper if you've got someone with a little bit of burst damage in that mid. And Witch Doctor actually coming up here for Clickstorm. Hmm. I'm wondering... Hey, there you go, VS. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm actually wondering what Clickstorm's got in store here. Like, you pick up a Witch Doctor, but you don't have... Like, you've got some nice slow and a stun, but you don't have a big team fight controller like a Puck or someone like that. Well, they are Radiant. Void is still there. It's a possibility for the offlane to take Void. Then oh. you've got Viper mid. Very good point. The problem is, though, if Void Kronos doesn't get the Naga Siren... And, no, you, we, would you really want to run a Void up against a Naga and a VS? The chance of you getting a, an effective ultimate off True. is very, very low. It's already very, very low for a Witch Doctor, because that Naga Sleep has got a huge range. And you're just going to cancel it one, once you trigger the Sleep. VS swap range, if you can get up to level, level uh, 11, level 2 swap, should be able to reach the Witch Doctor most times. Skywrath Mage Seal. I'd actually be really surprised if Witch Doctor is effective with his ultimate and if he's being picked up more for his voodoo restoration as well as paralyzing cask. If yeah. it's more of a, of a lane controller and maybe even some extra life points if the Russians feel confident enough to actually run an aggro tri lane. Because it could be a yeah. lot of heal coming into this lineup then. You run the ogre as, as the support, but it's up against a VS Skyrath, potentially Naga safe lane. It, it'll be rough to succeed with that kind of lineup. But if you've got something like a Bristleback that can dive behind towers with the Ogre and you go for early levels in Bloodlust and Ignite and you don't necessarily go for the stun, you can slow them down, have the Bristle chasing, and then while you're diving the tier one, have the Witch Doctor heal, or you creep skip to catch out the supports while they're pulling or just go behind the tower and find them there. Mm -hmm. It could be possible to run that as an aggro trial lane. I quite like the idea more than them running this defensively because Witch Doctor and Ogre, no flash farming capabilities whatsoever really. They can't stack yeah. and pull and make the most of that jungle. Or it could be Wind Ranger in the aggro try. That's plenty of magical damage output. Naga Siren will have no chance whatsoever really up there. The only issue I'm having is you've still got a hero that can be burst down and controlled, which is the Wind Ranger in that. I, I'd actually even prefer to see the Viper go up with the Witch Doctor and the Oak and yeah. and just try and zone them out of the lane. And then you can run the, the Wind Ranger either on the safe lane or the mid lane. So you can keep yourself open on that one. And then have a Drow. Yeah, yeah, actually. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think that would work really well. Dr Drow works in all combinations. That's actually not true. I'm very, very fussy with my Drow Ranger pickups. No, but I think it really would work here because, like you said, there is that one last position open, either mid or safe lane, mm -hmm. which Drow does excel in. It just depends on what MVP have in store to be the opponent in that lane. Yeah, if, if Clickstorm had the last pickup, then potentially they could go for it. Yeah. Uh, in this case, I'd actually probably prefer to see something else along the lines of Luna. Uh, and run a safe lane with the Luna, run Wind Ranger on the off lane, but then again up against a VS Gareth. Oh, actually, MVP. I, it's a beautiful combo. It's a beautiful combo. VS, Marana, Skywrath Mage, Naga can all have all the space. That hmm. is almost as powerful. Like, I kind of probably would have liked to see the Bane instead, combining up with the Marana. Uh, but this can still work, where they are potentially running their aggro tri lane. The Warlock, a very smart ban out as well, because this could, this could have left a Naga starting to run a safe lane, and you run Marana, VS, Skywrath, aggro. And that's almost guaranteed kills right there. That's a lot of harassment damage. And then the burst damage controller, which is even more important there. And the Spectre's the final ban from MVP, which I'm surprised they even do. Because if they are running an aggro tri lane, which now makes me think they're not, uh, then the Spectre would have been a perfect hero to have there. Like, the spectral dagger escape mechanism, you're not going to go... <laughs> I'm thinking more along the lines of clockwork or something like that for a click storm here. Because if they can really? get that hook shot out onto one of these heroes, they've got the range potential from Wind Ranger of Witch Doctor Viper to go over the cogs. They go for a Doom, so that's going to be their safe laner, I think. It kind of has to be, but... If the Doom... Okay. This could end really, really bad for click storm with a level 1 gank from MVP inside the Radiant Jungle. Because they're going to make sure that Doom can't get himself a good creep. Yeah. Or, or if he does, he has to spend 
a minute outside of the lane while there's creeps in the lane trying to find one of those creeps. Because obviously the first jungle creep won't spawn for 30 seconds. So we can't grab one in that period of time. So if you can keep him off the lane, you're good. This could still be a Doom off lane. Off lane, maybe. Um, and then, but you're running and then a Doom versus an Naga Siren, potentially. And, and you've and got no, no armor to begin with, and then it's Ventral, Ventral Spirit, how, uh, Wave of Terror, yeah. and stuff like that. Oh, there's your clockwork, Wrong just team. for the other team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the switch project, uh, prediction. But this now does mean, like, whoever they run on this off lane, the clockwork can survive it. Technically, the clockwork could just run a safe lane. They put VS, Mirana, Skywrath up on the top. Ensure the early farm, then the VS, Skywrath rotates around. Um, the Naga Siren could run middle lane. You could push the clockwork. It's up against a Viper in the mid. So maybe it might be in MVP's best interest to try and run the VS Mirana there, uh, or Mirana Skywrath, probably VS Mirana, better combo, and run the Skywrath Naga on the top of the clockwork on the offlane. Uh, MVP's options are, are very open, in fact. I think they do what you said. Go into the Radiant Jungle. If the Doom is safe lane, they stop him from getting that first creep. Yep. If not, then they've got information. They know what the lanes are, because their lineup, if they get these lanes right, they're going to dominate from the get-go. Yeah. Well, let's get ourselves inside the game, and I'm interested to see how this will all, all pan out. Forev, Stout Shield, a whole lot of tangos. They're going to go for a level one gank, but he will end up on the top lane. I'm fairly certain of this. Uh, and Naga Siren going to go for the middle lane. You can see the bottle rush build already in there. Uh, that'll allow Region to have like, okay, boots for Sky Wrath Mage. Could you actually flag? I want to harass them out of the lane anymore with this type of build. Three tangos. One clarity, that's all you need from a Skywrath Mage very early on. And then he needs to wrap up the lineup there with the Mirana. But at the same time, it looks like our Team Russia, the Clicks, will be trying this aggro tri lane with the Viper. So it is one of the possibilities that we did mention. But this destroys Doom. Doom oh, yeah. is dead. Like, like he's actually in a nice position to scout out for this. And he's, okay, this is the line. That's, okay, he's just in range now. Like, they can see him down there. So that's the vision line of the, of the Observer Ward. And MVP is going to back themselves up now. And they actually leave the Clockwork on the offlane. So it's Clockwork versus Doom. I hate to say it for the Doombringer, but if he gets mana burned out by the Cogs, it's one Devour. He'll basically be able to get off. So he better make this count in the very early stages, or else that Clockwork is going to zone him out of the bottom lane. It's all going to come down to this first creep. If he can find an Alpha Wolf first. I really would like to see him check the medium camp before the large camp. Mm -hmm. Because if he gets an Alpha Wolf, gets a bit of gold, gets Orb of Venom, he can crush the lane against Clockwork. Oh. 1v1, he can do very well. Really good rune for Region oh to start with. This is, this is the kill rune very early on. The amount of times a haste rune is just capable of changing up the game, it's, it's, just, a ha it's just too much. It's just too much. And right now, you see a Wind Ranger in the middle lane up against the Naga. And Naga's like, wait, I wasn't really expecting this match up in mid. I've got no Why is Viper shield. up on top? Yeah, no stats to try and like defend yourself. But Region will come in and now try and just zone Rekt back. And Rekt is also doing the very over-aggressive kind of thing. Picks up a Null Talisman, but was probably hoping to have a little bit more space here in the middle lane to farm up that bottle. He yeah, also well played, but there by QO. The creep equilibrium is now on his side. Up oh, on the ramp. you're a little bit too far up there, thank you. March will move over. Region, he's just harassing with the with this orb attack. March, if he can get himself at range for the stun, he'll actually be able to pick up this kill. One more orb. Actually, this could even be first ball by Region. Nice and now the quick south. That will keep him up. They are burning through a lot of consumables for this. But Region will just have to pop the clarity. That's, that's well worth it for MVP. That haste rune has been able to really cripple the Wind Ranger from reaching the bottle at any kind of quick rate, especially now that Naga Siren is running that bottle. So you've already got the 101 build. So harassment with with Riptide and Illusions. So no risk to QO there in the mid lane. And this top lane, you've already had to trigger off one big consumable. Yeah, that mid lane should have been easy for the Wind Ranger. Null first, like you said, go for the easy last hits, harass onto the Naga with no stout shield, power shot through the creep wave to push it back into the tower, force the use of Riptide. Uh, they're going to go again. Right now on top lane, the arrow. Thank you. Oh, he tried to dodge it. He backed up, but there goes First Blood going in there for reason. And Heen, well, he's going to get poisoned up into the Fog of War, but it's enough damage from the Viper to get the kill. And the Skywrath Mage had to back himself up. He didn't know what was going to come back up on top of that on the hiding ground. Doom down on the bot lane. It's a 2-1 two, two, build. 
right now. Battery Assault is really annoying to deal with. Especially for a Doombringer that didn't get an Aura Creep. Yeah. He decided to stay in the lane instead. And what did he even have an option? He's got himself a Centaur, which doesn't help him. And there is an Alpha Wolf up there. But he, he needed a Wild Wing. More than anything else, he needed a Wild Wing. I, I think you go for the... Oh, he's locked him in again. He actually managed to drag him in with the Cogs. Unfortunately for Ferev, he doesn't have mana. The bottle will now arrive, but it was a walking courier, so we couldn't deliver it in. While up on top lane, bouncing cask and the stun coming out in region. They will turn the arrow and the magic missile onto the Ogre Majai, but March is really dropping low. One more attack from the Viper, and this VS will go down. Successful at doing so, and they're going to keep that pressure on right now. MVP, they want more damage with the orb attack. Viper, I don't know if he's got enough life points for this one. He actually does have enough to survive. Heen, he's still got Leap available. They'll get through the south, and now that extra stun coming in is trying to get the extra kill. The Witch Doctor might lose his own life. Heen, another arrow. Ogre Majai will take it for the team. Titan, well, Titanic effect, but that orb attack, it will be enough to bring down the Witch Doctor. And Ogre Majai back behind the tier one tower, but they're not going to give it up just yet. Viper sitting down at half life points. Heen wants to come back in again, but with the, now the TP returning to the lane, the tri lane will be reassembled, even though Ogre Majai is halfway back to base at the moment. Yeah, I'm not sure about this build from Viper. He's got none in corrosive skin, and against such harass potential from the Scarath Mage, I was so sure he'd go for at least one. Yeah. Oh, bot lane, Doom being dived here almost at the tier 2 tower forever, getting up in his face. But yeah, back to that situation at bot. If you had an Alpha Wolf there, Scorched Earth mitigates a massive portion of damage from Battery Assault, especially when there's a Creep Wave nearby. Mm -hmm. If he mans up and fights that Clockwork with the Pack Leader's Aura, with an Orb of Venom to slow him down and chase, then he's got a great... Wrecked. Oh, wrecked. Where, where is this point in Snare? Uh, it's, the Shackle Shirt won't be out of latch, but the Riptide will definitely get the kill. This is what I mean. Midnaga doesn't go for the Ensnare. You want the max illusions and you want to try and farm the jungle from you know, 12 to 20 minutes if you're under pressure. But right now, Kuro has a firm grip on this lane. Would this though be one of those times when you would consider the one point up in Snare? Primarily because, well, March, okay, trouble. Walks away so the bouncing cast won't have any effect. Stuns over on the Viper. It's all out for the arrow stuff and he realizes he's going to die and just tries to get the best possible trade he can. Heen's got Leap away in case he does get in trouble, which he will have to use anyway. Uh, but yeah, with, with Windrun, you kind of just want to say, I will hold you in position, this will wear off, and then you could fight again. Would you want to do it over getting a, a 2 0 3? Well, the solo kill potential from the Naga isn't great against the Wind Ranger. Because that Windrun is always going to be there to stop the illusions doing the damage, which is going to be able to get that kill. So the only chance is when a Scarth comes in, which is going to you know, do damage over the Windrun anyway. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the Naga wants to get max illusions and max... Where's Battery Assault? Is it's, it's, bot lane? it's just bottom lane. Creeps? Yeah, <laughs> it's just bottom <laughs> creeps. He's got a DD rune. I think he wants to trigger it so okay. he can just get his... Uh, his uh, mana back up again. But there's no way you can fit Ensnare into the skill build to actually make it worth it because the, the value of the skill points in Mirror Image and into Riptide, plus Song of the Siren, you need that at level 6. There's just no ability point you can use until, you know, level 8 maybe you sort of slide in there and think, okay, now's the time. Sc it's going to be when Scarath hits level 6. Oh, no, 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 no. That's, that's fake, that's fake. <laughs> it's, I was really hoping they weren't going to properly commit to that one. QO moved back at the right time. He left one illusion in the middle lane to try and control the wave. And now he's going to attempt to do a double stack. That's yeah, fine. It'll work. I, I, I say attempt. He's got it. It's good timing. Which is now just going to be easy farm for him. Uh, looks like he missed it. Oh, I missed a large one. No. Yeah, that, that's not a great thing for him. But he's still got, like, Satters as well as Alpha Wolves together. So that's easy farm for him. I'm not sure why, but it's so much easier to pull that large uh, camp that way than across. Forev. We'll see how much of a man he is going to be. Spotter moving out. Hook shots in. The cogs. He'll actually put him up in time. The battery assault should kill off Die. He did get Doom up, but the battery assault will still have its effect. Now he'll move over towards the Witch Doctor. The Doom will kill him now. There is no choice. He wants to knight himself up, and he's not going to be out of time it correctly with the Ogres, especially considering they do very minimal damage. Top lane, the arrow. Is he going to walk into it? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Walks away in time. Please, Toby. Hey, it, sometimes you panic. Sometimes it happens. The arrow comes right, you try and fake left, and then you realize, wait, your left is actually walking into the arrow on the right. Ah, oh, mine caves. I'm just wondering on that bot lane, if Doom had used Scorched Earth first, he would have survived with the Voodoo Restoration, but I didn't check his mana pool, so I'm pretty sure he wouldn't have had mana for Scorched Earth, then Doom. 
because 312 mana is not a lot. I, I don't think Witch Doctor could have got himself in range anyway, because the cogs were up. Oh no, he was in range for heal. He was? So he was okay. being healed by the Voodoo Restoration, but if he had Scorched Earth as well, I'm just wondering if the maths works out, he would have survived and killed Clock. But then that gives the opportunity for Clock to run away. Who has Treads and Chainmail now? Going to the Blademail build, really tanky already, level 8. It's, it's the perfect build as well. Like when, when you look at this lineup coming out, especially a Witch Doctor who, who doesn't choose who he, cho who, who he attacked with the Death Ward. So if he does start to throw that one down, then Clockwork's just a very happy man. And Doombringer just turns on the score star. It's just like, um, okay. <laughs> he can't attack him. He's stuck inside the cogs, and you can't attack something which you're stuck close in by with. That's it's not the situation you really want to be in. How's this Naga looking as far as farm? Like Ring of Aquila, we've got 1,000 gold in the bank. You're running bottled as well. We're seven minutes and, well, eight minutes in practically. So the Radiance timing isn't looking too bad for the Naga Siren. It's just as long as the Naga doesn't die, then this Radiance timing will remain. And he kind of needs that bottle to get down to him right now. So he can use all three charges and pick up the DD rune. I'm wondering what the overall plan is for the Wind Ranger, because at this point she hasn't really had an impact on the game. If she moves up towards top lane, she could try and get a kill up on this Ventral Spirit or Morana. It's pretty easy with a power shot, which is now level 4. Yeah, and level 3. Mid, she's not doing a great job at zoning out the Naga simply because this Skyrath is everywhere. Rotating between top and mid, making the supports uh, on the Radiant side at top really difficult. Mm -hmm. Notice though that uh, the Clix is doing a really good job of watching where these supports of MVP are rotating. So they've got an Observe Ward now behind the T1 tower. They planned that directly after like the ward, which is just a little bit further south timed out. So after that timed out, it's like, okay, we've got to have the vision. All right, March waiting in that little tree nook. He'll get the first one off. Wave of Terror. So Okamajai already losing his armor. The bounce stun's going to fly in. At the same time, Regent, the clockwork. There was a perfect cog position. March will survive on 10 life points while you've got the Witch Doctor Voodoo Restoration keeping him alive. And then the hook shot in. Perfect targeting here from MVP. Opa. They dealt with that absolutely brilliantly. They realized where Clix was overextending themselves, and Clix did force an issue which really wasn't there to be forced. They were like, okay, Ventral Spirit, easy target, stuck in the trees. Yeah. It, it looked logical, but you're still walking an ogre in under a tier one tower, and TP support can come at any moment. And that's where you get you get stuck. And Clockwork got him perfectly. With, with, a double, with, with a double cog, you couldn't then maneuver. You couldn't do anything. And here is like Viper, don't have enough life points right now to try and survive this. It's still a Ring of Aquila, as well as Treads on a Viper. There's no mech to speak of. So forcing a team fight this early on just isn't really as effective. And Windrange is not TPing in to help. Windrange is farming up middle lane in what I can only assume is meant to be a four staff or Blink Dagger into initiation build. Yeah, I can't see her making the mech. Did she go for the power shot here on QO? No. Could have easily spammed it, but if you look at the mana pool right now, if she spammed that, she couldn't have a combo later. And there was no way she was picking up a rune. No. All the runes are being controlled up at the moment by MVP. Naga took one, Clockwork took the other. They really make it the most out of these bottles, and then okay. another hook shot in. And die. Well, he, do he doesn't want to doom this, because if he dooms this, it's going to be a waste of, of his ultimate. The rocket damage and for Rev will back up. Now he might have actually wanted to doom it, but the paralyzing cask isn't going to bounce to anything. The doom will come on for Rev. The shackle will not be out of latch region. They're going to try and buy a little bit of space here. But for Rev, they need to stick with him, or else he's just going to get denied up here by region. He's going to time it right, the attack in, and. <gasps> no! Whoops. A little bit off target. Viper will die in the top lane, however, to uh, march as well as Heen. So it ends up being a bit of a trade-off, but also a bit of a, a mistake timing coming out there from, from region. This is the situation where Doom with Pack Leader's Aura is so good. The drums obviously does help a lot, but he just sits there and mans up against Clockwork. There's very little, little Clockwork can do without the extra help of a Skyrath or Marana, something like that, to bring the extra stun, stop Doom in his tracks. But then Doom turns around. I'm, I'm still not feeling the power of this Doombringer. And now, they're going to try and go on region. The stun will come. No multicast on, on the Fire Blast, but there will be that cast to, thry, to fly up. For Rev, hook shot, two seconds. They trigger the drum charge, trying to escape from here. He's got a line, but no! March TP in at the same time. The stun's going to fly over, so they'll stop the Ogre Magi from at least getting out. One upside for them. But that hook shot was meant to catch the Doombringer out. Really unfortunate for them. So he, he must have thought that there'll be a delay on the TP. Yeah. Like that's, I will assume, his assumption. 
But if we go back to the draft, imagine this Doom was a clockwork, and we go to the aggressive trial on top lane. If the clockwork gets levels and TP's up top to help out up there, mm -hmm. that would have made a massive difference. Helps out mid, catches the Naga off guard with the power shot from Windranger, massive difference. For Doom, however, he's been sat here just trying to get a bit of farm, trying to hold his own against clockwork, getting zoned out. Yeah. The other downside about it, though, is like, yeah, okay, if they did pick up the clockwork, what would MVP then have on their offlane? Yeah, <laughs> Tempasaur or something like that. Yeah, something which could cause you even more troubles. But at the same time, you've got a 5 for 2, 1 clockwork on the field. So he's looking very, very strong at the moment. He wants to go. Yeah. He, he, he would love it. His hook shots off cooldown in four seconds time. So he might just have to wait it out a little bit longer and let the rest of MVP do their work. So he in region as well as March. They're already coming out down. There's obviously no 12 minute room, but this Observer Ward is just seeing everything they want to. And March is going to swap up. Silence, stun, Mystic Flare. Everything. The kitchen sink. A little bit of overcommitment, a little bit, but uh, it gets the job done. They the question is if they really regret that right now, because March, there's just done, which is going to be a very easy kill for the Viper. There is the Doom being cast over on, on the Skywrath Mage. Now, Hook Shot up will isolate the uh, the Doom Bringer out. Regen trying to move himself away from that Ogre Magi, and the Cogs allow for it. It, it covered the choke point perfectly. Now, the Battery Assault. Death Ward will drop. He ain't copying most of the damage from this one. He can't leap himself away to safety. So we'll get a full duration out, and finally the Viper will actually pick himself up that triple kill as the tick out finally happened. But Naga Siren rotates in, gets an easy kill over on the Witch Doctor, and there's two heroes against two heroes as uh, you will have Wind Ranger hanging around, but not for longer. Uh, there's two heroes in the middle lane, and MVP don't want anything to do with this. They are 200 gold away from having Relic over on Naga. So did Scarath die to corrosive skin? Yes. <laughs> Poor guy, he gets Doom thrown on him. He did a really good job running up and down this ramp, dodging the Ogre, getting back into the team fight, up onto the high ground to you know, get some damage out there while he was silenced, and then dies to corrosive skin. Mm. I'm, I might be wrong, it might have been a poison attack, but it's... He was, he was ticking down anyway. Mech now completed for that Viper, so pretty good for him. <laughs> they left the regeneration rune there. I don't know if they're trying to use that as bait. The Viper will pick it up, and now a little bit of quick de-warding. An MVP. Okay, d they, they, they didn't see that. The pings are uh, coming out properly, though, from, from the Viper, just saying, yo, guys, no one is defending this middle lane. Just be very cautious about what's going on. At the same time, you got Heen slowly bringing down this tier one tower on the top. And now March, hook shot in, he got two. That's nicely done with the Mystic Flare. That's a very quick death for the Witch Doctor, as well as the Wind Ranger. That for Rev, he's having a great clockwork game. That was gorgeous. That's the second one we've seen in this game, the double. Cogs. I think Valve have got to you know, put it into the game. If you're watching a game, oh. get an item drop when people get two or three people in the Cogs. Didn't realize how much life points Dice got. Now he's picked up that Ogre Club. It's up to 5.3, uh, 1.53k. Uh, okay. It's going into a BKB now, so no blink. I'm not as sure about that. Uh, primarily because he's going to lose the rest of his teammates before, like, during the BKB time. And the physical damage is starting to arrive for Miranda, so she won't care about, like, anything. And the Naga could just buy them some space anyway. In about 30 seconds, she's got Radiance. Yeah. You know, it's also the hilarious thing is, or like, MVPs get out of jail for Econ, which is that Song of the Siren. Hasn't Not been used once has it been used in this game. And they could just use that to set up, because it, it's... It's like the older combination you run with a clockwork. Like you run a shadow demon as well as clockwork together. It's disruption, allows the clockwork to move in, and then he just cogs up. Except with the Song of the Siren, you're holding an entire team in position potentially, and then you can just get the cogs in the perfect position to catch out like two heroes in close, which then allows Mystic Flare to go to work. Or you could just, in fact, you could actually use the VS to also reposition them if you want to get completely next level. Uh, and then you just like, you battle it out that way. I'm pretty sure QO has never bought a TP until just now. Because <laughs> the only Song of the Siren, three heroes. This is what I'm talking about. Where is that clockwork? He is going to TP in now. He can catch out two people with this one and push him back with the cogs. In fact, he just puts the defensive cogs out while die. He's getting completely nuked up. They swap him up. He's steel sealed, which means he cannot get that doom off in time. The Witch Doctor Death Ward's going to be coming out. That bounce stun's allowing the space here for the Viper to move up. The power shot is able to slice the clockwork up. Shackles not be able to connect properly, or at least Shackle Heen to another hero or a tree. 
And now they can try and turn and fight. Magic Missile off cooldown right now for March, and the arrow connects, which is even bigger. So it ends up being two cores for one core. The Radiance is fully done over on the Naga Siren, who is now TPing himself out towards the middle lane. And that's not the fight the Clicks were searching for. Oh, but man, that bouncing cast from the Witch Doctor hitting units in fog, such a big deal. The, the Mirana sitting behind the Clockwork thinking, okay, I'm going to sit here, get an arrow, try and lock them in under this Tier 1 tower. Clockwork running for his dear life away from the Death Ward, just not able to do it. The Viper diving pretty nicely, but it's still not a worthwhile trade, and they can't get any objectives from it. And now, objective-based gaming is not going to be an option for them. They need to take team fights. They need to get kills because Naga is going to start getting a stranglehold on these lanes, pushing them out. They've already got Tier 1 towers top and mid. This top rune, Dire Jungle, Radiant Jungle will be the next to be in the hands of MVP. Mm -hmm. You can see the uh, like the objective of QRO direct. Like the second he picked up that Radiance, TP mid lane. He sent like attack the first creep wave, made some mirror images, sent another one down the mid, sent and another two into the Radiant Jungle. So right now, Dire would love to just walk over. Okay, they spawn up again, but one of them still only has just the big saddle left. So he, do he doesn't have easy space to farm around here as the, as, uh, as the Doombringer. And the Viper has moved up towards the top lane, but this is so exposed to be up here. We have to remember that VS Skywrath Mirana roaming combination is so strong. Even though they might have Sentry Wards up on the two key points here, in fact, Sentry Ward in the bottom lane will time out now, so there is an opening for the Moonlight Shadow to come through. It doesn't actually help them out if they're smoking. Because I'll just walk straight underneath the sentry wards. False sense of security means you lose heroes. And they can't really defend this tier one at bot because they've got to defend mid against the Naga pushing. And like you said, sending uh, her illusions into the Radiant Jungle now, farming up all these camps. Mm -hmm. So now they've got the option. Trade top tier one. They've got a catapult. I think it's the only option they've really got. But they, can't, they can't trade top tier one though. Because then comes the defense from Clockwork. Yeah, well, or, Naga, or Naga just TPs in as long as the siren. And if they go, want to go on the clockwork, like Forever's sitting here right next to the tower, but if you're going to try and kill him off, you have to go into this box to try and kill him. And all they have is, like, all they have to do is just fortify, TP in and sleep. And you can start the sleep before you even start your TP. Because you won't need that much time to set yourself up. So now MVP start playing this game like, you know, badminton or tennis. You push your opponent across the map, push them to one edge, back to another. You don't waste any resources with your TPs or moving supports around. You get farm in the jungle. Yep. And you basically just run them ragged. Play across court. Shackle gonna fly. Nice latch over onto Region. March, he's still got the sword for Valvol. He needs to actually get level death. The stun will fly. They've already got the kill on the Mirana, and MVP just trying to make sure they don't lose any more. Ferev, he might actually have to hookshot himself in right now, and he can do so. Two heroes to get caught out. The defensive cogs as well. They did lose the Skywrath Mage, who basically blew himself up. Uh, but they're gonna move in behind the T1 tower. Remember, Naga Siren's still not involved. B actually, BT don't cool down. That's probably the primary reason why she wasn't getting involved. So MVP go for the cross court. Clicks goes for the jugular straight in there. They know they're going to overextend slightly in the jungle, trying to make the most of that farm. You're so MVP you're so English. What? You're so English. We're playing cross court right now, <laughs> and now Clicks comes in for a down the line shot straight into the jugular. <laughs> but MVP, strangely enough, being too efficient, trying to take. You know, that one extra creep. Okay, get one more last hit. Free yeah. gold. Free gold. Sentry or will drop. Wait, what, 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 what? Why? Food restoration is just too annoying. Then you've got the Viper who can come in. True. He could have battery assaulted a little bit more. And his hook shot. Okay, his hook shot was actually still on cooldown. And that's not a great thing. And he came in for the 20 minute rune on the bottom lane, but it's already been taken. Well, maybe he didn't come for that. Uh, Doom. BKB or not, he is a long way down on that bottom lane. He's not even showing signs of backing up, and this is the probably main reason why he can see them. The Observer Ward's watching it perfectly, and they also probably even spotted out. They see, yeah, they actually spotted the Observer Ward being placed down by the Dire side. So that really helps him out. And Die, okay, this this is ballsy. He's coming up for the D Ward now. A simple arrow from Mahin could make that work. As well as that hook shot, they've already got the negative armor, negative three on that. There's Heen's arrow and Die. That was not worth it for the 50 gold in the D ward. Because that now opens up the tier 2 tower in the middle lane, or potentially even Roshan for MVP. It's not like it was even valuable to them, because their observer is expiring anyway. That observer ward doesn't offer, the, uh, offer MVP too much information, because they have control of the Radiant Jungle anyway. That was mainly to see if Witch Doctor, Ogre, Wind Ranger, whoever it is, are trying to contest Roshan or something like that, which might be their next step. Yeah. It's just, yeah, a bit of an unusual play coming out from the Doombringer. 
But everyone's allowed one brain fart per game. So for now, Naga Siren is enjoying the farm now with a, a Yasha. So the very standard build coming out from QO, apart from the fact there is a lack of drums uh, early on in the Naga Siren, because most people do subscribe to the Book of Miracle, oh. uh, which is to actually have the drums before you go in to the Radiance build, because he builds uh, Ring of Aquila as well as drums before oh, really? going Radiance. Yeah, it's, it's, it's primarily because he wants to be able to fight a little bit earlier on, where this is a very unique situation for this Naga Siren. Kuro got a really good start. Like, he's got to pick up a kill. He didn't get any ganks on him from clicks. Like, they, they just weren't there for it. And Skyrath was always moving down from that top lane to help him out. Yeah. yeah. Which means they gave him protection. He got farm, he got freedom. And because of that, he knew he could just bypass it and go directly into the Radiance. Like, it, uh, he did obviously pick up the Ring of Aquila because you kind of want to have the stats as well as the, re the basic regeneration. Not to mention it does allow you to add a little bit more pressure against the tier 1 tower in the middle lane. Yep. Helps with the last hitting. That mana regeneration and the armor is definitely useful. Yep. And speaking of armor, MVP is going to be stripping it away from them. Even though it's only a level 1 in the Wave of Terror, so it's only a negative 3 in the armor, the Medallion of Courage is now picked up by the VS. And this, for me, is going to flag even, even, even more heavily uh, Roshan for MVP. Because if, if they pick up an Aegis the Immortal over on the Mirana, they can keep their damage up because she doesn't have a lot of survivability right now. Or potentially you could give it to the Naga Siren. But I think she's almost at a point too where mm, the chance of her dying is low. They can't hit the Observer. They know it's there. Well, it's because they can't see up on the cliff. They need to bring in... Uh, they're just another ob yeah, they're actually bringing the Ob's Ward out in the Courier now. They just threw a power shot and thought, okay, I'll try and do it this way, but they couldn't quite. They saw the Skyrath walk all the way around and they tried to cut him off by going this way, but Skyrath just doubled back. Uh, clicks did scat out what's going on with MVP. So it was very obvious what's going to happen anyway, for, at least for us, once the Medallion came out. And Rocket scouts their movement over too. So they know that Rocket came in from Roshan. They four staff out Roshan. This is licking his wounds at 3.5k life points, but you look up on top lane, Narcosiren wasn't going to come and join that. She just TP'd to the tier 1 tower and hold him there if she wanted to. It's almost like a bit of a stun the Witch Doctor who is slowly ticking down. Will restore herself up again. But the Naga Siren is taking the tier 2 tower. This is perfectly what MVP want. Clix is committing so many heroes and they can't just come back. The arrow is going to fly out. Okay, there's a, always going to be a creep camp there. Uh, <laughs> but, but <laughs> the optimism arrow coming out from Heen. And Kuro, he's attacking the tier 3 tower. They have to go back. No TP on Viper. There's TP on Wind Ranger. No TP on Doom. Hmm. Well, look at MVP. They're waiting for, for the TP to go, and then they're going to stop them. They will hook shot in. Kuro is now two-thirds of the way through the tower. So there's the TP. It's over on Wreck. They're too far away to actually stop the TP out. But at the same time, a Wind Ranger alone is not enough to stop this Naga Siren. She'll take... Okay, they've just given over a Tier 2 and a Tier 3 tower, and potentially the life of the Wind Ranger. Naga Siren, okay. Shackle, Death Ward, enough to hold him there. But Roshan's finished by MVP. He took out a Tier 2 and a Tier 3 tower in the top lane and spent all of his unreliable gold before death. That's still a, a win, hands down, for MVP. Yeah, QO trying his hardest to get Song of the Siren, kept seeing get it highlighted, 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 trying to cast it over and over again, but the bounce was just too much for him. Paralyzing cask is a pan in the butt. But look at the net worth now for Naga Siren. They got 16, pr practically 16,000 net worth. Leaps and bounds ahead. Yeah. And then you've got the Clockwork, who is doing very well for himself, on his way to Aghanim's, only about 1,200 gold away from that, plus the four staff blade mail he's got. So he can force, uh, he can hook in, force, uh, then cogs, then force out, then hook back in with the blade mail to try and get into that uh, witch doctor. So he can potentially bait the witch doctor ult after his first hook shot onto Doom or Wind Ranger, whoever he goes for. Mm -hmm. And it's his. It's a wrong position for clicks, but they've got to keep fighting. They have to keep fighting. If they hold back right now, I think you said this like 10 minutes ago, you can't sit back and try and farm your way to victory on this one. You have to get out there, you have to look at your smokes, you have to be initiating all the time. In fact, you actually see it right now, they still actually have a smoke in stock. Which is why I wonder why the Doom didn't go Blink Dagger, oh, because... Goodbye to Witch Doctor. That's a uh, double damage battery assaulting Clockwork. Ow. And even the Wind Ranger, who's getting chased down by Naga Illusions, still, no, still being chased actually, down by Naga Illusions. Might also be, more, more, be a little bit more cautious about the Doombringer. The Naga's staying in front of Dai at the moment, dragged him down to half of his life points, and that burn is still there. Wrecked. Maelstrom will at least allow him to clean up those illusions a little bit quicker. 
But once Naga's Iron Finch is a butterfly, there's going to be very little to keep him alive here. Now, Moonlight Shadow is going to be used to try and protect that Skyrath Mage. Sentry wants to be dropped. They do get the stun off. March will throw his stun down. He could technically swap him up, but they just waited it out perfectly. Stun into the arrow. And then with the Mystic Flare from the Skyrath Mage, they do get that kill. And the Viper knows he is overstaying his welcome by sitting up in that lane. But he's got no other choice. He wants to keep the pressure out. But once they lose a hero like an Ogre, they... They can't fight. No. And uh, clicks are being poked and put on every single front. They can't fight as five. No, with that aggressive tri lane not really getting anything. That tier one tower still standing. They didn't get too many kills up there. And then they haven't really utilized smokes. <laughs> uh, that's, that's <laughs> latching from downtown. It's only because for Red Force starts himself. Yeah. He, was, he wouldn't have been in the range of a tree if he didn't do that. But when he's that far out, there's no way clicks can come out to fight him. Because then they would have been in a position like. You got a clockwork up here, it's like, sweet. So you're going to get flanked in from one side, you're going to get flanked in from the other, and potentially cog-blocked cog <laughs> in that <laughs> middle lane, which would cause, cause even more troubles for him. Because then that team would be, like, split in two. Yeah. With clicks, I think their draft really relied on early game fighting. If they bought smokes 15, 20 minutes into the game, maybe a bit earlier, yeah. And blink on Doom, they go and hunt for the Naga. Just hunt that Naga down. Stop that Radiance being built so early on, because it was uncontested. Completely uncontested. Kuro has died once because he was at the Tier 3 taking it, almost taking Rax. That, yes. that, that has been the only situation in this game where he has been threatened with death. And, and even then, he doesn't care if he dies. Sure, he'll give him experience, but he doesn't have a kill streak. Yeah. So he's not worth a hell of a lot of money to, uh, to clicks to get the kill. Naga Siren is and always will be an objective-based hero. <laughs> Obviously, there's team fighting objectives. Ah, uh, they just spotted the courier going up. No, 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 no. Uh, what even they looking to buy? There's a point booster. The arrow is giving him the vision, but we've, <laughs> we've got little Toad. Does Witch Doctor have enough time to build that item? Because he needs another 3,000 gold. He doesn't. He's actually sacrificed his buyback to have this item as well. But at the same time, he needs to have the life points. The point boost is the best way to have that, because right now he's just ticking out, which is really, really problematic for him. And he's not going to gain that much by having arcane boots at this point. But at the same time, Clockwork Knight took shot in. Four Staff actually pushing the Viper away. And then the Doom on the Ferev. They will bring him down, but Naga tries to isolate the heroes. But the BKBs of Doom and Viper allow him to keep fighting. Now the swap back in. Dying his BKB is going to wear off right now. But they hold him there. The Death Ward for Rev needs some space. Four Staff away, and they are out of range of that Death Ward. The arrow, well, that's well off target. But the Doombringer did buy back. But he's, he bought back to no Doom. Like he's got Scorched Earth and level, and level Death. It's his only real presence here in the lane. Nice Shackle, though, using the range creep, but then Mystic Flare with the Magic Missile. They'll force up him back, giving him the space. The Hookshot somehow manages to thread the needle of Clix's heroes. While the Sky Rat's gone down, the TP in. There's your multicast double stun into the power shot from the Wind Ranger, picking up the MVP supports. And Rax is still up. Yeah, they were able to defend it. That was a great song from QO, simply because the two cores from Clicks had their BKBs up. So they were left there stranded without the rest of their team to support them. They knew they had Aegis the Immortal on the clockwork, so he was going to die regardless. Yep. So they allow him to die and then respawn. And then by the time the song's finished, the BKBs are down. So then they can start focusing heroes down. The supports are sort of caught in this position where, okay, our cores no longer have that magic community. We have to focus down Skyrath and Venge, and Mirana, and Clockwork, and they can't do this all at once. Yeah. I also want to flag something too. Look at the timer over on Roshan. Remember, that's only a five minute Aegis. It had to be literally 10 seconds away from expiring when he died. I didn't actually notice the, uh, the marker pop up on the screen at the no, time, did it but it, was, it had to be really damn close. A QO is now going to feel, feel even more comfortable. I'm not as sure about him building into a heart. Uh, even though obviously it's great up against a hero like who does doom you and, and you could be controlled for a while. It's mainly for the illusion strength when you buy heart on Naga. It's so you can send them down the lanes and now clicks can't really kill them. Because the Maelstrom procs were doing a great job from the Wind Ranger holding these illusions out. Region, get out of there. He can cut a shot straight away, but he broke the smoke over on Die and Holy Moly. And now Clockwork hooks us in <laughs> for Rev. He's got Nagged himself, so he's quite happy just to, just to interrupt their fun play, especially when Naga Illusions are pushing into the range racks on the top. 
and now they look for another opening, and they found one too. Okay, that's well off target, but Marshall swap him up, actually out of the Mystic Flare, in one way saving his life just to die a fraction of a second later. Just 40 seconds without the Witch Doctor. Moran has been pushing this lane at bot for quite a while, naturally pushing in top with the Creep Wave plus Catapult. You are going to go in there and help out. Look shot. He hit, a, who? he hit a Naga Illusion. No. He hit a Naga Illusion. He literally traveled like five inches. And that's not that far on a Dota 2 map. The Arrow will get a five seconds on over on Viper. Yeah, without that Death Ward, they're feeling a lot more confident, but they do have to be careful because the Doom is back up again. And those BKB isolations really... Like, they're nine seconds. That's still a long, that's still a long time. Shackle trying to latch on QR, but he now knows that stun is on the sidelines. Okamajai is the only other hero that could... <laughs> For He's actually <laughs> hook shotting to kill off creep waves at this point. You know, Blade Mal up as well. So a little bit of return damage going into the Viper after he Viper strikes into the Clockwork. But they Mystic Flare, Orb, Concussive Shot, and Erect. Incessant pressure on all three lanes though. These Naga Illusions going to spread across the three. Marana pushing in bot onto the tier three. There is no way for Clicks oh, to stop good this stun. right now. Really good stun. That's actually going to buy Heen almost a space. You'll get, yeah, the Lightning Prox will come out. But this tower is just so low. Two, three Naga Illusions being sent down to that bottom lane, they could take it. It's just the ultimate pressure point from MVP. And they're playing it really smart. They can wait again. Roshan's now going to be two minutes away from spawn time. If Clix wants to come out and try and fight them, sure, let them. They're actually quite good in two to three combinations. And you know for Rev, as he hovers around the middle lane, he's going to turn that into a better advantage for MVP. Not to mention, there is currently six Nagas on the field. Four of which are pushing in through the mid. The real one and the Illusion pushing sure. in through bottom. They have to fortify if they're going to hold this tower. And the question is, they do it? Nope. They let the tier 3 tower drop on the bottom lane. Now they have exposed racks on top and bottom. Both the side lanes are in trouble. Especially when they do that. Swap, seal, Mystic Flare. Well off target because the four staff got out from Rage. And Holy Moly comes in for the stun. And they want to turn the Wind Ranger around. With Moonlight Shadow, they drop one, two sentry wards to try and find one hero out. The Forever was getting ready to hook shot himself in. They never really arrived though. And this bottom lane still being harassed as well as the mid tier three. It's really weird seeing two supports on his top lane split pushing. Look, look at them all push back. It's like, okay, well, split push isn't really working. And when, yeah, when you're using two supports to split push, that's not really a lot of, like, pushing power with a VS and a Skyrath. Come on. It's, right, that, that's, that in itself is just meant to be pick off. That's all they're looking for. Add a little bit of pressure in, but it's not a real push kind of way. That's where the Naga and the Mirana come in on, on the middle and the bottom lane. And MVP, you'll be waiting a little bit longer. It's another, another 20 or so seconds before they'll be capable of picking up Roshan. That's a pretty big item on the Wind Ranger, but they know it's there. But who's it really meant to control? Like the Mirana is the only one, and Mirana doesn't really seem to care because she's not building into a BKB. Clock if he hooks in, because if you... Oh, March. <laughs> okay, that's a BKB from Doombringer being committed, and March is four staffs away. This is a big opening. When that BKB wears off, they can isolate the Viper completely if he tries to come in for the kill. At the same time, the Naga actually is ready to fight. Has Diffuser Blade up and running. March now. Potential. There you go. Clock. Hook shot in. The Cogs are down. Die easy up on the cliff! He can't get down right now. He's stranded on the high ground. Naga is pushing in for the melee racks. Wrecked is up and they force staff him down. The magic missiles back off cooldown. They know there's no doom and they know there's no BKP. Wrecked caught in the trees where it is most definitely not safe. A double kill coming in there for the Skywrath Mage. The Naga is still forcing the issue up on top, but actually moved a main hero into the tier three tower in the middle lane. And it won't be long until the rest of MVP will come over. They, at this point, they don't care about Roshan. Taking the racks is the most important thing for them. Especially if they can get a pick off like that. In Snare, the BKB might be triggered, but the physical damage, they swap him out so he doesn't have the high ground advantage anymore, and they will bring down the Viper. Region looking not too healthy, but a lot better than the rest of the Clicks heroes. They're down to only one hero, the Witch Doctor, who's forced all the way back into his fountain, taking out both side lanes, and now they'll take out the mid as well. This game is MVPs. Yeah, I mean, excellent performance there from Forever. He did have a few iffy hook shots. 23 to what, 27 minutes into the game, he threw some out on illusions. But I think he was just like, okay, well, I've got Aghanims. I can do what I want. Yeah, it was intimidation factor, but the Koreans looking good. They'll take their group stage matchup. And that now means we'll get to have ourselves a 
another break as we'll uh, be switching out the teams. Of course, this is only day number one. There's a lot more days coming up for the IESF. Three in total. There's group stages. Four groups in, uh, there are, and two teams will progress themselves from the group stages into the quarterfinals, where we will be playing a single elimination bracket with $50,000 up for grabs. Not a, not, a bad, not a bad way to earn a living. Well, three days, potentially $25,000 for, for first place. Pretty damn good. Not too shabby at all. Not too shabby at all. So I'm looking forward to seeing MVP Phoenix. Obviously, we've had uh, two of our favorites on the main stage so far. Newbie, as well as MVP. I believe we actually have another favorite coming up on the main... Actually, no, I believe we actually have two other teams. We have the uh, team from Azerbaijan uh, coming up on the main stage next. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are, of course, uh, the other two favorites out there, which is the team from Finland and the team from Sweden. They're the other two teams we're, we're looking to see eventually up on the main stage. So a lot of great Dota to hopefully come our way as we work our way through the group stages. Of course, if you want to follow all the details, head yourself over to the ISF website as well as any other Dota 2 portal, which uh, hopefully will soon be displaying all the, all the group stage results.